Hi everyone, it's Mocha here. Welcome back to my channel. Lately in Japan, it has been getting insanely cold. There is no doubt that fall is about to be over. I know it's been over in Europe for... I don't think I don't think you even you guys even had fall this year, did you? That's just kind of what I took away from like what people have been telling me. There wasn't even fall. It just went from summer straight to winter. So according to that switch of season, I thought I would show you guys a very typical Japanese winter makeup look. A lot of Japanese influencers have been preparing for winter and kind of stopped all of their fall content. So I was really able to see what type of products and what type of application methods and colors are currently trendy or about to be trendy during winter. And I really wanted to share that with you guys. So I thought I would replicate a typical Japanese rosy makeup look. It's gonna end up looking like this. So if you guys would like to see how I did that, just keep on watching. So according to the current season, I got myself something from Starbucks. They have these really, really cool seasonal drinks here for Christmas. Oh my gosh! I got the creme brulee latte, I'm pretty sure. So I already prepped my skin with skincare and everything so we can jump right into the makeup part. Well, something I like to do in winter and that is also very trendy here in Japan is instead of using a cushion foundation or liquid foundation, uh, I use a BB cream or a CC cream. Basically, it's almost the same as a foundation, but it does take better care of your skin and it's not quite as thick. The one that I'm going to be using today or that I have been using the past few weeks already is the, apparently it's called Nanba Zin, maybe numbers in, um, porcelain base skip tone up beige. It has SPF 50, which apply SPF even in winter kids. And yeah, it's just kind of like an additional layer on top of your skin, but it's not as heavy as a foundation would be. I also love the packaging. It's so like minimalistic, so it makes me feel more clean. <laughs> now I like to apply it with a beauty blender, but you could also use your hands or a brush. I don't think it really matters. And what I like about the usage of BB cream here is that you don't need an East Asian brand to get a similar effect because I feel like internationally BB creams are sort of very similar. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of like dot it on my face. That's at least how I've been doing it. But if you have a better method, let me know. So yeah, sort of like this and then you can honestly just go ahead and like dab it into the skin. You're gonna notice fairly quickly that yeah, it really just brightens your complexion and sort of evens the complexion out, but it doesn't actually cover spots or give a whole lot of coverage. It's really just for, yeah, a better complexion and also just uh, evening out any any redness or any any pigmentation you might have. Okay, so I'm done blending that in. I think you can really tell that my complexion is looking much more healthy, much more glowy, much more bright, but it is not enough coverage for me. Now, when you're using a tone-up cream and kind of like evening out your complexion and you're left with something like this, I personally recommend going in with a more with a more high coverage concealer. I personally like to use the one from NARS. I know this was popular a few years ago, but I still think it's pretty trendy right now. This is the Radiant Creamy Concealer. Again, I use a lot of cream products just because of my dry skin, and I have it in the shade um, 1241, I think. I, I'm pretty sure this is the very lightest shade. And I do this very specific concealer placement. Now, I'm not sure why I'm doing it exactly this way, but it really helped me personally bring out my face more. I don't know how to say it, but this concealer placement, this specific one, I use every day and it works great for me. I apply it right here under the eye on like my brow bone or just my lid in general. And then I go put a line right on the tip of my nose, right here. I then like to go a little bit right here on the chin 
and of course you can uh, cover any spots that you might have as well so this is the finished placement this is exactly the way I do it every single day sometimes I skip the tone up cream and I just apply this concealer but I do think uh, applying the cream just gives a better base to work with because sometimes I am left with a lot of redness if I don't use a tone, tone up cream and I let it sit for just a bit and then I'm gonna blend it with that same beauty sponge that we used for the tone up cream here you can see what it's gonna look like when it's finished I think it really brought up the high points of my face really well and I think it looks so like so dewy and so glowy I really love this this very specific placement I don't know now this is the finished skin that we're gonna be working with today here you can kind of see the glow and evenness that we've created with just two products and now something controversial which my oily girls will probably hate me for this but I am I don't use powder anymore I've basically thrown out all of my powders now you might think how do I set my makeup like how do I keep it in place your skin sets it for you we have dry skin so it like is already being absorbed pretty well you don't need an additional layer of dryness to put it in place I don't know if that's like common knowledge and it's just me who's been using powder all this time but if you're a dry skin girl and you keep wondering why your makeup is cakey it's not actually cakey I think you're just putting maybe too much powder or just don't use any powder at all so that brings us to our next step which is eyeshadow immediately there's no setting there's no further skin preparation this is the base that we're gonna be working with today one palette that I think matches winter or winter time just so so well is this palette this is the 3CE or style Nanda palette in the shade dear nude these really soft milky neutral tones I think it's such a gorgeous palette and I think you can really create some beautiful like romantic looks with this so I'm gonna go in with the very lightest shade at first now this is something I've talked about on my TikTok quite a lot to be honest um, and it's to use a eyeshadow color that is just slightly lighter than your original skin tone and just using that as a base all over your eye and even bringing out your mid face with it so for me it would be this sort of like milky white shade but uh, for any of my dark skin girls just use one of your fall makeup palettes maybe and find an eyeshadow color that is similar to your skin tone but it should be a tiny bit lighter i don't know if you can see this but because i haven't used any powder my tone of cream and concealer have set right in my crease so so we don't want that that doesn't look pretty so that's where the eyeshadow comes in and you're going to create a nice base shade but you're also going to be at least setting the eye area which tends to crease a lot so i basically just blend that out and also apply the eyeshadow simultaneously and the reason why I love doing this so much is because you're gonna have a much more beautiful eyeshadow look if you have like a clean base that you're working with and you're not just applying it straight up on the foundation. You create this almost like blank canvas. And now you do look kind of dead, but at least you have a clean base now. I'm gonna use this shade that's right down in the center. It's this sort of like peachy orange shade. I kind of just want to apply that only on the outer crease of the eye. Make sure to apply it very naturally, so very lightly and not too harsh. I think Japanese winter makeup definitely tends to bring out more rosy, like muted pink sort of colors, so we don't want too much orange going on. Now after that, I'm gonna go in with this sort of like gray shade. And now I'm gonna apply that right here, so basically on the upper lid. So we're trying to keep everything very natural on the upper lid and then have our main focus on the lower part of the eye. Now if you smile, you can sort of see the fat under your eye appearing. That's just gonna help us not stick the brush up our eyes, so I like to do that for as a safety measure basically. And then you can start adding that same shade on your lower lid, so. Sort of like this. I've stabbed my eyes a few too many times so I like to just like try and close them or at least smile so there's this extra layer of fat. We're gonna go in with this very bottom shade on the right hand side and it doesn't really pick up well on camera but it's almost like a brown pinkish color. Basically like a dark pink color. 
but it's very muted so it's gonna look a little bit brownish but this one is the perfect color so you want to pick that up with a smaller brush or the the small side of your eyeshadow brush and you're gonna want to define your lower lash line with that a little bit but basically just the outer part basically having the main focus right here on the outer corner as well as the lower part of the eye that's really gonna help us have this big eye effect so that's mostly where also like dolly or cosplay makeup has the eyeshadows main focus now next is you want to go in with that same shade that we use to create like the base of our lid so for me that would be this like very white shade again but um really make it as similar to your own skin tone and then you want to brighten up just the inner corner of the eye so right there because we did put that gray shadow there and having it all the way up in the front is going to make you actually look like you have dark circles and we don't want that so but bring it down to your lower lash line a little bit I think another thing that's very popular to do during winter time here is to add lots of glitter and lots of sparkles. So I'm taking my favorite essence palette. Anyone who follows me on TikTok knows that this is my baby. I always have like three or four of these because this is just the best palette. Ever. And I'm going to take this sparkly shade. Uh, it's on the left hand. It's the second shade from the left side. But I just apply that on my middle finger and, and then sort of like frame the lower lash line with this. Now we can move on with eyeliner. I truly recommend to use a brown eyeliner and also not a liquid eyeliner, but more like an eyeliner pen, sort of like this. Now what I do, I use some sort of brush that I have lying around and I'm basically going to push up my lid with that brush and then I'm going to line my lash line. I find this really gross, so I'm, I'm going to cut it out, so... Let's jump to when I'm finished with this. Okay, so now we can move on to the actual wing of the liner. Basically, this is a really like controversial thing for me personally. The way Japanese girls, most of them, do their eyeliner is they actually have the wing facing downwards. So the puppy liner is really trendy here. But I feel like, I feel like the the, the way they do it, the, the super extreme going down, it doesn't suit me as much. So we're going to try and do like a middle way. So we're going to do like not down down, but we're going to do like, yeah, sort of down. <gasps> we're just going to go sort of down. So basically you want to start from the very outer corner of your eye. And normally they would go straight down, like fully, fully down. I'm talking like down down. I don't know how to say it. But we're going to try and make it a little bit more flattering to our own features so i'm gonna just follow my natural lash line my upper lash line Sort of like this you can definitely from the front see that it's a downward facing liner but it's not so extreme to the point where it just looks odd on my face and i really recommend that to all of you while you're doing east asian makeup don't one-on-one -on -one replicate it from the reference that you have but really try and think how your features are different from one another so how your western european white features however you want to call it are different to East Asian features and I think the most distinguished part is probably the eye area so you really want to think is that gonna suit my eye shape probably not I'm not saying that no Western person can have downward facing liner look pretty on them but just think of the differences of your features and then think how you can make it flattering according to your own features now next thing I'm gonna be using is black mascara now for fall I really love to use brown mascara but i feel like in winter black mascara just hits different 
I cannot tell you the chemistry behind it. I use the Heroin Make um, Volume Up Mascara. I also like this specific mascara because it kind of creates these like separated lashes for you and you don't need tweezers. And that just completely transforms the entire look in general. Oh, something I forgot. Do your eyebrows. <laughs> I always try and get them pretty straight just because that's not only my natural eyebrow shape but it's also really trendy here and I think it makes your face look more youthful. Next step is sort of to bring another dimension of glitter onto the face. I like to use this like glitter pen. This is also from Style Nanda. It's called the Eye Glint and it's in the shade Glitter Shot. It's just sort of this like it's just this like really cute highlighter pen. I think you could just use a normal highlighter in general. But what I like to do is I like to I like to apply it right here. I saw this highlighter thing on TikTok by this really cool makeup creator. So perfect. So I'm going to try and replicate that. And again, underneath the eyes where she put it on her brow bone. But also in a C shape right here. It might seem like a small change, but I do think it genuinely has this super great effect. Like in winter, you want as much sparkles as you possibly can. So for lips and cheeks, I'm going to be using the Roman Dewy Full Water Tint. Basically, I'm going to try using this as blush as well. I'm going to be using the lower side of my beauty blender to blend it out as much as I can. Roman tends to dry out pretty quickly, so if you're replicating this, blend it out quickly. You can already see some patching on my skin. Uh, so let's blend it out. Ooh. The lips I'm gonna prep with my almost non-existent Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liner. I just can't find a sharpener, so I have to use like the, the wood part, which hurts. I just overline a tiny tiny bit and then you're gonna apply that same shade on the lips and with that we're finished with the look Thank you guys so much for watching that is it for today's makeup tutorial i hope you had fun and i hope you could take away some tips for not only japanese makeup but also just like makeup in general i don't want to be the typical youtuber but don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see further of my videos but besides that i just hope to see you guys next week bye Janet.